Okay. First of all, shout out to all of my nerdy intellectual black folks. Really appreciate you. Today we're going to talk about why people are giving up on the American dream. This is something that has been going on for a while. It's been going on for a while. And what it has done, it is, has jumped to a different level because of the pandemic. I'm going to go ahead and talk about how this really, it, it kind of started with van life. People would give up living in an apartment or a house to live in a van. And this was a decision most of the time based upon purely economic reasons, right? And I started to see videos created on YouTube and you can go ahead and just put in giving up the American dream and you will see similar sentiments. I'm tired of working. Um, let's be a minimalist. I want to be free to travel. And one of the things that I consistently see with all of these people is they have no family. Every last one of these YouTube creators that is talking about giving up the American dream, they have no family. Uh, one guy, I find him to be bright, kind of funny, Timothy Ward. He has no family. He just kind of go, you know, he just, he's done videos talking about why he's not married, why he doesn't have children. And this used to be a very rare part of America. It was rare for a man not to be married at once upon a time. It was rare for a woman not to be married and have children. This was rare. Now we have a pro proliferation of single people in their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, never been married, don't have no children, and they have no attachments. Because all of these people talking about giving up on the American dream. And what is the American dream? To go to college, to buy a house, to get married, to have two point kids, to have a nice lifestyle. That is the epitome of the American dream, which I did a video talking about why it isn't as easy. Upward mobility isn't as easy as I originally thought. It's not even close to what it is. Cause like, I I'll give you a little snapshot. When I was a kid, there were so many things you could do as a young man to make money. You can cut grass. You could collect bottles and take them to the store and get the deposit back. There were, there were so many things you could do. You, you just literally, and back then, this is something that if it happens, I don't know, it hasn't happened to me. When I was a kid in the seventies, I would routinely find money on the ground. Sometimes it'd be some change. I remember one time I was going to the curb market and I had, cause I wanted to play centipede and I had, um, maybe $2 and it was a quarter per play. So I could play eight times. So I'm walking to the curb market and I see what looks like a dollar bill sticking up out of like, there's like a little patch of mud. So I pull it out and it's a $10 bill. And then under it is a $20 bill and down the street, there's some more bills. So I find $70 on my way to the curb market. I was up in there playing centipede for hours because I had the money. Now, one of the things that I feel that the great pandemic has done is given people a pause. It's given people time to sit, time to reflect, time to ponder the possibilities of what could the future look like. And I feel that this great pause, this moment of time where they were repoing cars, they weren't foreclosing on the houses, they were not evicting people. It gave people a glimpse into what life would be like. Like, I'm gonna tell you, since I got rid of the car rental business, 
I wake up most days 8.30ish, may lay in bed to 9.30, then get up and do some stuff. Um, I may go have lunch, I may have breakfast. I have plenty of time freedom. And more importantly, I have money to enjoy my life. So one of the things that I've done is I've kind of slowed it down. Because if you notice, I'm not like out here trying to sell a bunch of stuff and everything. I'm just doing content, putting up ideals, concepts and stuff. I'm not really selling anything, even though the moist men of YouTube keep saying, well, he just trying to sell courses. I'm just sitting there like, well, I'm not selling anything. You know, it's kind of funny. And going on with people who are opting out, who are literally saying, I am not going to chase the American dream. I'm just not doing it. I'm out. I feel from a psychological perspective that these people are wired differently. Like Timothy Ward, he's wired very differently. Um, Cause here's the thing. It is the human experience to crave companionship. It is the human experience to crave reliability. It's the human experience to crave stability. That's just in our human nature. So to objectively avoid these things on a conscious level means that you're wired differently. But due to the pandemic, a lot of people are opting out of the American dream. And I feel this last two years has created a lot of energy moving people away from the American dream. It has created a lot of um, angst and disharmony because I'm seeing people who are young, who appear to be in good health, who are saying, I ain't gonna work that hard. There's this chick on here called Sheeta on the loose. And Sheeta's thing is she doesn't wanna be a hustler. She doesn't wanna be an entrepreneur. She just wants to live her life. She's a single woman living in Mexico. And you're starting to see alternative ways of living. And I'm going to talk about that because of the expense of living in America. Now, I am getting ready to come out of my hiatus and I'm going to do some training for the people who want to chase the American dream. Because like I said, these people are wired differently. These people are different because I grew up poor. I grew up in Alabama and I grew up looking at the big fancy houses and looking at people who were doing much better than I was. And I said, I want that. And I got it. And it took a lot of hard work. It took a lot of effort. And that's where we run into a problem. I see videos that the American dream doesn't exist. Okay, for a poor little black child to leave Adamsville, Alabama and to obtain what I have done, the American dream is alive and well. The American spirit, however, that's a different matter. That is a very different uh, situation. That is a very different way of looking at it because this two year break, when I was in the military, they had a policy not to let you take leave for too long because if you took leave for too long, more than 90 days, I think it was 60. I think, you know, I don't, I don't remember. Someone could correct me in the comments, but I think it was 60 days was the max unless it was terminal leave and you were ETSing out the military. And if you had 120, you know, you had 120 days, you could take four months of terminal leave because you were leaving the military, you weren't coming back. This two year break 
has made America lose its military bearing. People are, people know what they want. They know what they want. They just don't know how to get it. But they know what they want. They want the ability, they want what I have. The ability to wake up when you want to, not wake up and have to go to a job. You, you want the ability to choose what you're gonna do with your day. I was watching uh, JT Pocket Watchers and he was talking about why people fail businesses and when they would come to him, he asked him, why did you get into this business? A lot of people said, I don't like being told what to do, which is a horrible, horrible reason to start a business. And I was listening to the show and um, it was um, interesting because I've never started a business for any of those reasons, never. And I would never ever start a business because I don't like, because here's the thing, when you start a business, you have a bunch of people telling you what to do. They're called your customers. <laughs> they have expectations, they have desires, they have demands, especially if they've paid you some money. They, they, they're, there's an expectation there. But what I feel is a lot of people are tired of struggling. And you know, since I used to work in the hospital, I worked with some patients who were in constant pain. And depending upon how bad the pain is, cause you know, they're like on a scale of one to 10, where's your pain? Is it a one or two or three or four or is it a nine or 10? And literally I saw people where their pain level was at seven. Every day they were in pain. They hurt every day. I remember going in this patient's room and his heart monitor was flat and he was in bed. His eyes were open and his mouth was open and he had the uh, little pain thing and he OD'd on it. He OD, you know, he had figured out how to get around because these uh, pain delivery systems, they have safeguards, but he figured out how to get around these pain things and he intentionally OD because he was tired of being in pain every day. And you know, like I'll share some with you. One of the after effects of my heart attack is I have gout. And what is that? My knee and my feet and my hands will sometimes just swell up. And you know, sometimes it's a moderate flare up where it'll just kind of swear up and it'll be gone in a few days. And then there are days where it is a throbbing pain, throbbing, throbbing. I mean, you can't sleep, you can't rest. Fortunately for me, it's, you know, uh, since this stuff started, the first ones were the worst. And as I've gone through this, they get less and less painful and their duration is less, is, is shorter and shorter. Because the last flare up I had, it lasted four days and I was fine. And I, I started to think, because intentionally what I do is I just lay in bed and let it pass because when I stay off the joints, they heal faster. And I started to, you know, once again, I am in no shape, fashion, or form in major pain or nothing. But one night, my, my foot was just throbbing. And I was like, I understand. I understand why this guy killed himself. Because this dude had been in pain for years. Not a few weeks, not a few months. He had been in this pain for years. And he was in and out of the hospital and he, you know, he just got tired of it. He just got tired of it. And that's where I think a lot of people are with the American dream. They got high student loan debt. They got high credit card debt. They never, there, no one ever taught these people financial literacy. So they've set themselves up in a bad financial situation that makes obtaining the American dream even more difficult than it is. And I feel we have a lot of people who are strictly just tired. They're tired of struggling. They're tired of it. And this is why you will see an explosion in van life. You will see an explosion in house hacking. House hacking is 
very much a thing. And what is house hacking, if you don't know, you will buy like a four bedroom house and instead of renting the house out to one family, you would rent out each one of those bedrooms on a per week base, per month base. I don't know, whatever way they do it. And house hacking is going, it's dramatically on the rise because you've got people who've gone to college, who graduated, who have a degree and they have no money. Um, there was a dude who used to be on here a lot. I haven't seen him in a while, short change. He was a very, a prodigious saver and he would like pull money out of the ATM and leave a receipt on there. You know, it's interesting. The first time I ever saw a receipt where someone pulled out a thousand bucks and their balance was $3.8 million was when I got to Sandy Springs. Cause I went to the ATM and it was receding. You know, you're curious, you pick it up. And I was like, wow, that happened. I think in the 2011, that's, that's going to be me one day. That's going to be me one day. I like this. I like how this feels for you to go to the ATM and pull out a thousand bucks and have millions in the bank. And I routinely around here, I'll see that a lot. I'll see someone, they'll pull out some money and they got 30, 40, 50, 60. That's consistent around here. And, but I think a lot of people are opting out because they're just tired. They're tired. They've been on this, this treadmill for years and they're not going anywhere and they're not. And honestly, um, I kind of understand because let's take my, my car rental business. If I was willing to endure the pain, I could make that successful. But I have been exposed to other business models that require way less money, make way more money and have way less hassle. So for me, based upon that exposure, it doesn't make sense to stick with something that I know will never be an easy business. Uh, James, I got recently paid out on like, this is saying the Range Rover. Um, this chick did something with the Range Rover cause she got mad cause I turned it off. I'm getting the check for $14,000, which is great because the Range Rover cost me 15,000. And if I had to sell it because of the miles on it, cause the Range Rover stayed out. I never had that Range Rover back in inventory for more than a day. It was, it was consistently out and that Range Rover was stolen four times, four times. So it had a lot of miles on it. I don't even know how many miles it had on it, but I do know with the massive depreciation that I wouldn't have got 14 grand for it. So I'm sitting here wishing that more cars had gotten stolen because that was the only car the police were unable to locate. But, you know, I look at it. I mean, I got a phone for the car rental business and every morning I was afraid to look at it. So if you were to parallel and contrast that with every day you woke up, you were afraid to pick up your phone or you were afraid to go out because something bad was gonna happen. And this is, this is something that goes on for a long time. You're going to reach a point where you're going to want to opt out. And I feel that that's where many people are. Number one, I'm going to say it because of these lying ass YouTubers. Um, one, of the, one of the things is don't trust YouTubers. If you're looking for objective concrete advice, um, do your own independent research. Do not look to the majority of YouTubers because they will lie to you in a heartbeat. Cause it's all about the views. It's all about the views and the monetization. They will lie to you. And I feel that's why there's another girl. Her name is Lynette Atkins. And one of the things Lynette Atkins, Sheeta on the loose, Timothy Ward. There's another girl, the upgrade. They have similar paths. Now the upgrade is a single mother, but right now she's house hacking with her mother and someone else. So there's like four or five generations under one roof. And what you're going to see is, like I said, you're going to see the explosion of van life. You're going to see the explosion of house hacking and you're going to see the explosion of minimalism. You're going to see 
the explosion of simple living because people are tired. People are tired. Like, I went out on a date and, um, you know, it was a pretty good date and we had some fun. And she was here and she asked me like what my rent was. And I was like, it's 4,700 bucks a month. And she said, good Lord. She couldn't believe it. She said, this is nice. And I'm gonna talk about why I do the things that I do. Um, years ago, I got on this theme of designing a life of intent and design. Instead of living life that was handed to me, because that's what happens when you make a certain amount of money. Your income dictates where you live. Your income dictates what you eat. <clears throat> your income dictates who you will date. Your income dictates a lot of stuff. So I didn't want to be in the position where my income was dictating how I live. So this is one of the reasons I became a business owner and this is one of the reasons I like serving people. Because I never want to be in the position that if I wanted to do something, I couldn't do it because my income was not enough. And you know, this is more in my house. This is more in my house. And it was an experience I wanted to enjoy and I'm enjoying it and I like it. And I might be here for a while. I may buy another house at the moment. I haven't made that determination. But one of the things that I'm a little different on is if you're willing to sacrifice. Now, once again, these people who are opting out of the American dream, they're opting out. I get it. I understand. When you're in pain and you're in consistent pain, you want to get away from that pain and opting out may deliver you from that pain. But here's something that no one ever told Lynette Atkins, no one ever told Sheeta on the loose, no one ever told Timothy the Ward, no one ever told the upgrade, that if you're willing to embrace the pain for three to five years, three to five years, you can have a remarkable life if you're willing to embrace that pain, because the pain doesn't last forever. But no one's ever told these people this, and they're just, or, or, and also, a lot, a big interest, a big thing is everyone is on a social media vibe. Everyone is trying to do the cool new business. I had a friend uh, who was talking about, they wanted to get some properties for Airbnb, and I said, the stimulus money is leaving the economy. Airbnb rentals are gonna they're gonna cool way off. So you might wanna be careful before you go out and get a mortgage on a property for an Airbnb property. It completely ignored my advice. He was like, yeah, 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 you do that YouTube stuff. You don't know anything about real estate. I was like, okay. Currently, he has nine Airbnb properties and his revenue has fallen 70%. And he just barely is making enough money to pay his mortgages. And right now he's not happy with Airbnb. He's pretty disgusted. And I was like, you know how you feel? You feel like I feel with that car rental business. You have all this management, you have all this responsibility, but you're not making any money. And he said, yeah. And then I reminded him. Now, there was someone you know who's pretty intelligent, business savvy, who told you not to do this. You remember? Oh yeah, that was me. I told you not to do this. And I told you what was gonna happen. So going forward in the future, Whenever we sit down and I give you some business advice, maybe you will listen next time. Because now he's in a situation where he does have an out because uh, he and his wife sat down and talked about it. they're going to sell all these properties. So in this market, that could be the, that could be a win for him. And that's going to be an out for him because uh, he, he's like, man, this just was a disaster. And I put on here on this YouTube, I told you the Airbnbs were going to slow down. Because see, I had a car rental business that gave me the temperature of the economy. And when these people start going late, like that morning I woke up, I had 25 cars rented. I had 22 people late. I was on the phone like, hey, are you bringing the car back? If you can't pay, bring the car back. Because I know what would happen. Once people get late and if they don't feel any pressure or a sense of urgency, if you're not on them, oh, 
Two days will turn into a week in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. And they will be driving and depreciating your asset. They will. But here's the thing. And I said this a minute ago and I'm going to say it again. If you're willing to serve people, meaning put people before yourself for three to five years, you can have an amazing life. You can live in a $4,700 apartment if you want to. You could drive a Porsche, like the interesting story with that Porsche. I was on my phone today and I found a picture. I don't have my phone. I found a picture of the 2017 9-11 that I saw and it was this blue which I was, was going to kind of get that blue and I really wanted that car in 2017 really wanted that car in 2017 but it wasn't time because you know I had a very successful consulting business but I had massive cost I had 15 employees I had payroll, I had not one, but two offices. My overhead was a lot. And I was like, this isn't the business to get that Porsche. So I just put the Porsche down as a written goal. And then I challenged myself to make my business better. And in 2000, 2020, I got my Porsche. I got my first Porsche. August 2020 and then I was looking and I wanted the more upgraded Porsche so I got my second Porsche in 2020. 2020 was a really interesting life because I sold my Audi on eBay. I sold my BMW X5 for 25 grand to Carvana because you know I was like I can get maybe 27 but if Carvana was going to give me 25. Boom. So I sold the, the Audi, I sold the BMW uh, M5, X5M, bought my Porsche, and then ordered a 2017 BMW X5M from Florida. First time I bought a car, that I, the first time I drove that car was when it got delivered and the dude dropped it off the truck with the envelope. First time I ever drove that car. So in 2020, I went through five cars on the personal side, five. First time that's ever happened. And you know why? Cause uh, 2020 was a crazy year and I wanted to get what I want. Cause see, once again, the way that I live my life is I get what I want. I don't get what life hands me. I don't take scraps, but a lot of folks who are opting out of the American dream. And once again, I fully understand it's a struggle it's right now. Cause I made a whole video talking about upward mobility. Isn't what it used to be. It isn't back in the twenties, the tens, the twenties, the thirties, the forties, the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, you go work for a company and not even graduate high school and matriculate to being a VP of that company. Upward mobility was open for anyone willing to work hard enough. Now, it's not like that. It doesn't matter how hard you work. Once again, back on the car rental business, I worked really, really hard and the business sucked. Cause it, for me, you know, maybe for you, it might be your thing, but for me, I didn't like that business. And I didn't like the returns because I had been exposed to like my, my best business cost me 2,500 bucks. This business has made millions and it cost me 2,500 bucks. So for me to go out and spend 2 million to get the car rental business to the level that I want it to be, to pay me the money I want is not that palatable. That's not a tasty concept to me. It's kind of like, we're gonna spit that out. So I feel that as the global reset, because every month it gets deeper and deeper. And I'm probably gonna do a video because you know what? They're talking about a fourth stimulus check. Talking about another stimmy check. And you know what this is gonna do? It's just gonna kick the can down the road. What it's gonna do is what was, what's gonna happen is gonna happen. 
it's going to happen. And all it's going to do is jack up the economy because what it's going to do is flood the economy with stimulus money and there will be a temporary reprieve. The STEMI ballers will come out and what they will do is just prolong what's ultimately going to happen, which is a recession. I don't think there's nothing that they can do from a, the Fed raising the interest rates to Biden. Like there's a lot of videos out here that Biden is going to try to cancel the credit bureaus. And I, I laugh, you know, um, Equifax made like Experian made like close to 6 billion Equifax made close to 5 billion and TransUnion made 3 billion. And each one of these companies have what's called lobbyists in Washington that they spend millions having these lobbyists talk to our Congress people. So can Biden get rid of the credit bureaus on his own? No, he cannot. He would have to have the help of Congress and the Senate. And this is where the lobbyists concentrate their activity because I've seen several videos talking about the credit bureau is going to get canceled. We're going to get rid of Equifax. We go. I'm like, no, we're not. No, we're not. They're not going anywhere, you know, because everyone gets excited because people hate the credit bureaus and all this other stuff. And um, one of the things I found out is when I wrote my um, dispute letters, all of them got answered. All of them activated disputes and the credit bureaus worked on them. So for me, I didn't have a problem with the credit bureaus doing what they were supposed to do. But here's the thing. And I want you to think about this. And this is why people have limited thought. So we're going to get rid of these independent publicly held companies because I think Equifax, I think they're publicly traded. I'm not sure. I have to check on that. But to have the government administrate our credit histories. You know what a clusterfuck that's going to be? You, you think it's bad now? You think it's bad now? But once again, Biden cannot cancel the credit bureaus. You know, it sounds good. Oh, wait a minute. Joe Biden was supposed to be getting rid of your student loan debt. Did that happen? Did that happen? Did that happen? No, it didn't. I remember people were calling Dave Ramsey saying like, should I pay off my student loan debt? So should I wait to buy Biden's been in office. This is his second year. It didn't happen. And mark my words and people's like, oh, this video is not going to age appropriately. Uh, Biden is not going to touch the credit bureaus. He, it, it's a good talking point. But in reality, 10 years from now, we will have Equifax, TransUnion and Experian. I am willing to bet money on it because I know that these companies spend a lot of money lobbying the House of Representatives and the Senate and Biden cannot do this without their help. And all it takes is, and the, the, this is the thing, it just takes a handful of senators and a handful of uh, representatives to say no and the bill doesn't pass. They don't have to get everyone's buy-in. They just have to get enough people to say, no, we're not going to do this. That's it. And it don't pass. So here's the thing. Why I feel that so many people are opting out of the American dream is because they don't understand how America works. Like I just gave you a lesson because everyone is talking about we're canceling the credit bureaus and oh yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do this. It feels good. But people don't understand how the country works. Talk about what happened to me in October where I made that video and which brought a lot of y'all here and people were like, we're going to have you arrested. I reported you to the FBI. And I was like, you don't understand how this works. And I'm about to explain to you how it works. If someone in a bar is talking about a crime that they committed and you overheard it is called hearsay. And then you call up the police. Yeah, they committed this crime. The police are like, who, where, what? You got names? Now they're going to ignore you. Now you, if you're driving by and you see these guys inside robbing the bank, 
you see a gun pointed at the teller's head and you get on the phone on the phone it's like hey i'm at fifth and main and these guys are robbing the bank right now i see this guy's got a gun to this teller head you can report that because you actually saw it you actually saw it and this is one of the reasons that so many people are opting out of the american dream they don't understand how america works they simply don't and that isn't bad but they're unwilling to learn how america works because once you learn how america works it's much easier to get to the american dream once you understand how america works i was dating this girl and her father had started a company and this guy literally owned the town he literally he was a nice man because they had a very beautiful house about five miles outside of town and on the other side of town was a lake and they had a lake house and i fucked that chick in that lake house several times it was so peaceful and there was an aisle out going hoo, 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 hoo. And every time the aisle would go hoo, 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 i'd be like uh 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 fucking to the rhythm of the aisle and um this guy like i said he literally owned that town because when his factory was running he literally employed everyone in town he understood the american dream because a uh, very nice man no no one in that town had anything bad to say about this guy you know he helped out people he had employees who came down with cancer you know what he did he kept paying them their check they didn't come to work they were fighting cancer and they still got a check and uh, i remember i was out with her and we stopped at this diner and this lady comes up to her and she just hugs the girl her name was sheila she hugs sheila and she said i want to just tell you your father is an amazing man and she talked about how her husband who had passed recently worked for her father got cancer and did not work for two years two years and her father kept paying him this man was loved it wasn't like you know boss hogs and the duke of hazards no no this man and his family were loved i mean every time someone see her it's like how's your dad they love this man because he played the game he knew how because in the book of the 48 laws of power it talks about this you got to spread a little gold this man took care of these people took care of these people i heard stories of like you know uh, one guy was working his wife had a really really tough pregnancy and he let him take off a month to deal with his wife and kept paying him but his business was extremely profitable extremely profitable he had a manufacturing concern and she took me by the district because they had a district with like 15 buildings her father owned all that owned all that he was an owner and if you want to achieve the american dream you need to become an owner which once again the timothy wards the lynette atkins the sheeta on the loose the upgrade these people are not interested in being owners they want to just live their regular ass life with little hiccups and repercussions but here's the thing and this is something that i've learned if you don't prepare for the future it's coming regardless it's coming whether you prepare for it or not the future one day will show up one day i am going to wake up and i'm going to be 65 and either i can prepare for that moment or i can just put my head down and act like it ain't coming which is one of the reasons i sold my house which is one of the reasons that I've kind of changed up my dating protocols. Um, instead of dating five or 10 women at the one time, I'm, I brought it down to two. And ultimately, I feel this year it's gonna just be one. Because for me to get married, I have to change who I am. Like, I'm gonna say it, getting some new pussy is some of the best fun ever. But I gotta let that go. If I want to give with a woman, 
create a relationship and get married. And I like every time I talk about marriage, y'all, y'all all, y'all go, I ain't getting married. I ain't getting married. I ain't getting married. Cause you scared. You scared. She going to stick you for your Pokemon chips. You scared that she going to take you don't, you make it $30,000 a year and you struggling. You're like, man, I ain't trying to bring no one else in this. But once again, you know, in a few years, I'll probably be married. Have me a family. Uh, Cause that's what I want. And what I'm doing is preparing for that Friday night, you know, cause the other girl I went out, she's okay, but she's no one I'm going to marry. I already know that. So she's, you know, chicks be getting fired pretty quickly around here now. I mean, they don't, you know, like, and then the one that I have been dating, it's kind of, she kind of snuck up on me because is she the prettiest? Mm -mm. Best body though. She got that hooker body. But it's her personality because we actually have conversations and stuff. And um, I have a feeling that I'm going to be dating her long term because, you know, we've been dating on and off since 2020 and she's still around. And, you know, I kind of know her. And one of the things, like I said, because there is what I assume that I would marry. And then that's what I will really marry. And, um, you know, she, she, she's in my prototype. She's five foot two, long hair and very, very feminine, extremely feminine. Those are my criteria of anyone I date. If that doesn't exist, no. Um, so one of the things that you have to do like this guy, Sheila's father and uh, Sheila's father, Sheila's mother had died and Sheila's father was dating a woman that was probably two or three years older than Sheila. I think Sheila was 30 when I was dating her and he was dating a 32 year old. Nobody in that town said a word because this man was loved. Once again, I'll give you an example. If you remember when Jerry Seinfeld was dating a 17 year old, it's on the internet. Her name is Shoshana. Jerry Seinfeld from the Seinfeld show was dating a 17 year old girl and no one said nothing. You want to know why? Because Jerry Seinfeld is loved. People love Jerry. Go to the internet, put Jerry Seinfeld and Shoshana and you will see, and she, she's banging. She has a banging body, beautiful girl, dark hair, big tits, beautiful girl. Jerry Seinfeld, who was at the time, I think 40, 40 ish. I don't know. He may have been older, but I know he was past 30 was dating a 17 year old girl and had the blessings of her parents. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. And so this is how I know that how you're perceived makes a big difference in what you do. Jerry Lee Lewis did it. Elvis did it. Elvis fucked a 14 year old girl in Germany. No one said a word, right? So once again, mores and things like, you know, navigating this American dream, like my persona is somewhat of an asshole. So, you know, people, People come for me every day. People like, go in the camera, we're gonna cancel you. And I'm like, what time are you gonna cancel me? Let me know so I can put it on my calendar so I can be on the lookout for that. Let me know. I don't know what time we're gonna cancel you, but we're gonna cancel you. Oh, wait a minute, you don't know how you're gonna cancel me? All right, never mind. I'm not putting it on my calendar because it ain't happening. Because see, here's something else too. Once you create a life of intent and design, because the thing that happened to me in October, like I got 35,000 subscribers on this channel. I've gotten 4,000 subscribers on Hustlers Kung Fu. I lost a total of 500 subscribers on this channel and 500 subscribers on the other channel. That's what I lost. 
See you later, clowns. Goodbye. Because um, one of the things is when you build a life of intent and design, you live life on your terms. Because like the once for me, because I understand how America works, because I gave you some lessons like Joe Biden is not canceling the credit bureaus. As many YouTubers put this out there, put this notion into the YouTube space. It's not going to happen because I know how America works. Joe Biden can't do it by himself. And because these companies have lobbyists that they pay millions, they're not, he's not going to get the buy-in of the House of Representatives or the Senate, so he's not going to be able to do it. That's something that is not within his powers to do on his own. He can do an executive order, but he cannot do an executive order to shut down publicly traded companies. That's an act of Congress. It will take all three bodies of the government to do that, and then one of the reasons it's never going to happen is checks, checks and balances. A lot of people, once we get into this, it's like, do we really want to have a government that has the ability to dictate and shut down a privately held company? That's a critical question because see, if they somehow by some stretch of the imagination pull this off, then that's going to be a litmus test for future endeavors. Let's say they wanted to shut Ford down. Well, we shut down the credit bureaus. Now we can shut down Ford. Now, you know, it, it, it creates a very dangerous precedent. It creates a very dangerous slippery slope. And that's one of the reasons it's not going to happen because do we want to live in a country where a government can shut down a business that isn't breaking the law, isn't doing anything wrong simply because we don't like it. It ain't going to happen because it, it, once they do stuff like that, then what's next? We want to shut down oil and gas. We want to shut down the coal industry. Once you do it, everything is open book. Everything's on the table. So that's one of the reasons it's not going to happen. Because like, you know, I've been around a while. I've been around a while. And I know how America works. And just shutting down a privately held profitable business isn't how America works. If anything, they will make them even bigger before they would even think about shutting them down. But once again, if you want to live the American dream, you got to make a choice. You can become an owner or you can continue to rent seek. And what is rent seeking? Rent seeking is getting money without providing value. So you can keep doing that and um, We'll see how it works out for you. All right, this is Glendon. That's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one. And the training is probably going to start the 1st of March because I haven't sat down and done it because I've been getting, selling cars, getting rid of cars and, and processing insurance claims and stuff because I like to focus on just a few tasks versus trying to do many, many different things so I can actually get them done. And I actually shipped out the title to the Range Rover yesterday. So I got two more checks coming this month, hopefully. And then that's going to free up a lot of headspace because uh, I started selling the cars like this. Like, hey, if you're ready to buy, let's meet. If you're not ready to buy, let's not meet. Just to weed out all the time wasters, the people who want to come and test drive the car who don't have the money. And I put in there you know, some language like, hey, you know, you're flipping cars, or you're a hustler. I really appreciate your hustler, but don't email me because I'm not going to sell this car to you cheap enough where you can resell it and make money. And since that, I've, I've stopped getting all these lowball offers because that's who they were coming from. They weren't coming from people who wanted a car to drive. They were coming from people who were looking to buy a car so they can flip it and hope that I was ignorant and didn't know the value of my car. I ain't that dude. I ain't that dude. But anyway, I will talk to you guys in the next one. That's all I got for you right now.